Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's tutorial on the Airbus A320 we are going to talk about the Airbus Smarter Briefing concept and how to do your departure briefings. Now, this one basically works the same over all Airbus aircraft. Now, the briefing starts actually without briefing, but with a cross-check. So, the pilot flying has inserted all the data in the FMS and the pilot monitoring would cross-check that all of the data is correct in here. Things like, for example, um, the SID, the constraints, the uh, general flight data, the performance and so on. So all of that data would have to be cross-checked. Now, after the cross-check is done, that is when you actually start the briefing. And the briefing is divided between the pilot monitoring and the pilot flying. Now, in order to start the briefing, we start by setting a distraction-free environment. That means closing the cockpit door, um, making sure that we are not actively waiting for um, the ground crew to tell us anything. Basically, an environment where we can just focus on doing the briefing and nothing else. Now, the pilot monitoring is going to start the briefing. The idea behind that is that the pilot monitoring actually has to be fully in the loop because... Airbus does assume for the smarter briefing concept that you only talk about the things that really matter for the flight and not standard stuff like what is my taxi route going to be, what is my sit going to be, what does it look like, how high do we climb. You check all of that yourself silently through the charts and only then later on you are going to um, talk about the most or the most um, important data. Now in order to make sure that the pilot monitoring is in the correct loop, the pilot monitoring is um, going to be the first one to talk about the briefing and the things that we talk about there from the pilot monitoring is the the general plan of uh, what we want to do so it starts with a takeoff runway and applicable intersection the sit and its designator the first cleared altitude the msa or mora for the climb trajectory and then finally the extra fuel and time that we have on board the airplane and those are the items that the pilot monitoring is going to start with and and this basically ensures that the pilot monitoring is in the correct loop for our um, upcoming flight. Now, thereafter, it's going to be the pilot flying's turn. And the pilot flying is then going to brief the pilot monitoring on some of the stuff that the uh, pilot monitoring just couldn't check that easily. So that includes hotspots for the planned taxi route, the stop margin for the rejected takeoff, the engine outset, what to do in case of an immediate return or a diversion and considerations related to that, special operations and non-standard operations. Now, why do we list the two apart from one another? Well, special operations basically is anything that is SOP but that is not done every day. That could include stuff like the use of, of anti-ice, uh, APU on packs takeoff, stuff like that. So stuff for which Standard operating procedures exist, but things that might not be done every day. Non-standard operation includes things for which no standard operating procedures exist, or for which you might, for example, have to think outside the box. Now, a very easy example of that could be a speed restriction on your SID. Let's say that our first restriction was 160 knots rather than 220. In that case, as you can see on the performance page, we could not retract our flaps. And indeed, a flap 1 takeoff is normal, but if we had a speed restriction of, let's say, 160 knots, then we might have to do a flaps 2 takeoff so that the airplane doesn't accelerate towards the S speed as soon as you reach acceleration altitude. Things like that would be non standard operation. After that, the pilot monitoring is going to start with the threats he identified for the uh, flight, and thereafter, the pilot flying is going to list his threats that he identified. And then both crew members are going to talk about mitigations against those threats. The briefing is then completed by going over miscellaneous items, which might include things like telling your colleague how long you want to do manual flight um, before engaging the autopilot, stuff like that. Literally anything would fit the briefing at this point. So now that we talked about some of the general considerations, Let's have a look at an example briefing and what that may look like. So, as I mentioned, the pilot monitoring is going to start the uh, briefing. So, here's an example for today's flight. 
Okay, so our, take our takeoff is going to be from Munich, runway 26 right, via the Alpha 1-2 intersection, via the Give Me 1 November departure. The first cleared altitude is flight level 70 and the MSA 3700 feet. Extra fuel and time. The airplane tells us that we actually do not have extra fuel on board, but if we compare the block fuel with the flight plan, then we can see that we've got 300 kilos extra, which basically is roughly just shy of 10 minutes. Now it's the pilot flying's turn. Okay, I do not have any hotspots for the planned taxi route. Stop margin for the rejected takeoff. Unfortunately, the Phoenix does not calculate that, so I don't have any um, specific values for that. So we just have to improvise here. So stop margin for the rejected takeoff is a thousand meters. The engine outset is on the runway track, climbing to the Munich X4 point, and We'll climb to 4,000 feet as the MSA is uh, 3,700. We can do an immediate return as we are below the maximum landing weight and we have prepared the immediate return for an ILS approach onto runway 26 right on our secondary flight plan. I do not have anything special or non-standard today, so what threats do you see for our departure? Okay, the... The threat that I see is that we are in a controlled learning environment over here, so it might happen that I focus a little bit too much on explanations and a little bit too little on actually flying the aircraft, so we are going to pay a special attention to navigating and aviating correctly. Okay, I do agree with that assessment, and other than that I do not see any threats for this departure. I do not have anything miscellaneous today. Do you have any questions or suggestions? No, nothing from me. And that is the briefing completed. So once the briefing is complete, the crew is going to read the cockpit preparation checklist. Now let's go ahead and have a look at that. So cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers removed. Now be aware that the answer comes from the pilot flying even though the pilot monitoring is the one who did the walk around and checked that outside everything was removed. So as pilot flying, be sure that you actually involve the pilot monitoring in that, for example, by looking at him, getting a feedback that not only on the outside or not only on the inside, the um, pins and covers are removed, but also on the outside. Fuel quantity. And for that, you go onto the fuel page and you look at the balance of the fuel. So you can see over here, that our left side is a little bit less than on the right side. The reason for that, of course, is the APU that is operating since about an hour and a half and draining fuel out of the left wing tank. So for the fuel, we can say it is more or less balanced with a slight imbalance, which is explainable in here. So fuel quantity, 6,580 kilogram balanced. And that is the correct answer. Balance need to be needs to be added there. Seat belts. You check on the ECAM that the seatbelts are actually on, and then you also check the position of the switch that is in the on position. Rem remember, you might have an airplane that has an auto position for the seatbelt. Actually, most aircraft do. So make sure that both the switch and the ECAM agree on the system status. Seatbelts on. ADIRS. And that one, very important, you check it down here in the FMS. You do not check that in the overhead panel. Do not look here. But look down in the FMS. You go to data, position monitor, and down here, that is where you look. So ADIRS, NAV. You verify that all three of them are in the NAV mode. Barrel reference, QNH 1029er. Again, you cross check PFD, ISIS, PFD. Why am I going so slow? Because it's very easy just to look up here. So, very important, always check the system status, not the, not the input status. System status, QNH 1029er. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. All right, and with that, the cockpit preparation is completed. Now is the point where the captain would do the welcome PA to the passengers, and now is the point where we would give any final details to the cabin crew before they are um, sent to close the aircraft doors and with that we would go into the before start procedures. I do hope that you found this tutorial interesting. If it did, be sure to let me know in the comments below 
And with that, I'm very much looking forward to see you all again on the next one, where we are finally going to take the airplane moving. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe if you're up for more. And if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much, and see you all again on the next one.